Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex, and today we're going to be taking a look at Windjammers 2 on the Nintendo Switch, the long-awaited sequel to what is a Neo Geo classic. Is this one going to be worth the add to the library, or are you going to be best off sticking with the original? Well, hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we will do here, join our growing family, and let's get started. So naturally not much in the way of story so we are jumping straight into gameplay. That said the game it does pack an arcade mode and each of the 10 characters contained they have kind of this like fun little outro video on beating this short single player run. That's especially true of Steve Miller it's clearly the team behind this one just having a little bit of fun with the game's history. Gameplay wise though like it's very much paying tribute to what fans will know and love a 1v1 sport where you throw a frisbee in an attempt to get it past them and into the goal behind them. Think here almost advanced Pong with special abilities and it very much sums up the experience. Modes wise though, look you can expect arcade mode as I said that's going to be 5 matches against 5 opponents and two mini games it's very much a single player experience you've got quick play first is where you can choose the competitors and locations if you want to face the computer or even play local two player finally online online packs ranked matches quick matches the ability to play with friends that you can find online or finally you can look at your data that is for the leaderboard ranking as well as online stats by character windjammers is a blast though always has been and i'm happy to say it's very much the case here as well it takes the series known controls and then expands upon them controls wise expect not only movement standard throws and lofted attacks but also then the ability to curve your attacks punch it in midair dash jump and even smash it down you even have special abilities that can be described as what i would call offensive and defensive it's simple enough though honestly, it's like a simple expansion over the original, but it's still incredibly satisfying, it's just addictive and deep. Now it's common with Windjammers to be compared to 1v1 fighters over sports games and that's still going to be very much the case here. It's not just about good shots basically, but rather reading your opponent and predicting their next move. It fits that genre too because yes it's simple to pick up and play, but mastering it that will take a ton of skill. Outside of the expanded moveset then expect a bigger roster, we take things here from a cast of 6 to 10, we're introducing Sophie, Max, Yao and Sammy. Each character has their own unique special ability as well, you'll be building that up with a meter in the lower half of the screen. Alongside that of course then expect the usual kind of series known speed and strength stats. I always play as Steve Miller myself, I'm just that kind of guy, but still it was fun to experiment with these new additions. The speed and strength stats then simple enough in idea, speed is movement of course, strength and that is how hard they throw. The controls they mostly remain the same for each and every character outside of the specials. Finally though rounding things out that is stages, we had 6 in the original, they've now been reworked but we also have a grand total of 10. They vary in size first of all but then they also introduce obstacles and challenges, for example think barriers in the middle of each level that deflect the frisbee but they also move around or maybe casino that's my personal favorite of the new inclusions here the points for a goal they are actually determined on a roulette that flashes behind each character it respects the original game though in like every sense and just then kind of like builds upon it the new controls as well they are welcome though i will say here i would suggest use the d-pad for that kind of extra bit of control the stages are challenging and varied in design with the point placement changing i think you know the center may be worth more than the goal on the edge of the net but that's completely randomized and it means you have to think about every stage in a different and kind of unique way it is fast paced so when I gotta say look this is very much a game where I thought I could do like you know small 5-10 minute sessions here and there but often they just kind of went like way out of control and before I knew it I'd been here for like an hour or two it's just because it's so addictive I wanted just one more go. Throw in then multiple difficulties for single player it's definitely a step up but I will still say here look if you are a single player focused gamer it is still pretty limited. 
For single player gamers out there though, if you're going to be picking this one up, you've got a few modes. Not many, but you've got a 5 round arcade mode with 3 difficulty options and then versus quick matches. That is it, and I wish they could have found maybe a few other ways to expand upon it. Outside of that though, like issues wise, the hitboxes, they feel maybe just a little bit more wider this time around, you know, more forgiving than the original, so you'll definitely need to readjust to that. Also then the online play, it seems really good what I've seen, but I was pre-release, I only got a few matches in. What I did experience of that online though, it seems a whole lot more stable, that is for sure, no noticeable lag, but I was disappointed to hear that this is dropping on the Switch, PlayStation, Xbox and PC, but there is no crossplay. The original at this point, it is pretty much, you know, dead from what I know on the Switch, and that seems like a miss to me. More frustrating is the fact Xbox and PC, they do actually get crossplay, but PlayStation and Switch, they are kind of left to fend on their own. It would have been an easy way to guarantee players, so hopefully this is something they consider adding in the future. Overall for gameplay though, like I had fun, it's fast paced, it expands upon the original, while also kind of being respectful of the original, and while it's definitely limited in its scope of modes and longevity from a single player perspective, it's still a great time in local or online multiplayer. Just hope the latter there online gains an active community now, that is never a guarantee for the Switch. Visually then, it's a great looking game, very much recreating what we knew from the original release but bringing it, you know, into 2021, hand drawn almost in style, I know it's been in development now for years, but it feels almost similar to their effort with Streets of Rage 4, if I didn't know, you know, that bit of information about the development period, I would have thought honestly here, you know, Streets of Rage did well, so they came here next. It's bored though, you know, the colour palette, the locations are varied and the cutscenes, as short as they are, I actually really enjoyed them and they are still images too, but I felt like they kind of like delivered on each character's personality. It's all topped off then though by some seriously flashy animations and just like clean menu designs still embodying kind of that 90s feel. There's no complaints visually from me honestly, I think it looks great, ducked or handheld, and I don't think any fan out there will be disappointed. The original game then released in the 90s and that soundtrack it was awesome, I'm happy to say though if you like the original you're going to be impressed here, it very much embodies that same spirit. There's some minor sound effects, you know, throws, specials and so on, but I think here it's the music that you needed and they absolutely delivered. I liked it so much in fact I'd be happy to listen to it offline. So the final verdict on Windjammers 2, it's clearly made by fans for the fans and honestly that's all I ever wanted. It takes the original, recreates it and then expands upon it, you know, new characters, new arenas, that is more than welcome. Problems though, well first off look, it was almost to be expected but it lacks much in the way of single player content. I'd almost consider that part of the game a training mode before you do jump online. Then the hitboxes at times, they feel a tad too generous, the online modes, the lack of crossplay, that's disappointing, this game, it has a diehard community, I'm just not sure it's going to find that community, it's core audience on the Switch and that's always going to be a concern for me. Overall though, like a great 8 out of 10 from me today, just maybe be wary if it's only single player content you're looking for. Will you be adding this one to the library though or are you holding on to that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner, it helps more than you know so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.